Hello, everyone. I'm Chung Yi. Nice to meet you. To follow up, construct three how to make a horizontal aircraft game. What should you pay attention to? Episode 2. In the last video, we designed a basic horizontal aircraft game. There is a small aircraft, and you can fly from left to right at equal speed. The player can control its direction. It will be destroyed if it accidentally hits the wall. It also can shoot bullets. They can shoot down incoming enemies as well. So far it looks like a decent game POC. But apparently it's not enough. We still need to make some more changes. To make it perfect. This iterative process of correction. We call it, rolling game development. In this process, we don't have a perfect architectural design. We fix them if we need. Specifically, we'll improve it step by step if which the part is not good enough. And then we expect it can reach our goal. To be the perfect enough to us. Then no more nonsense. Let's get started. Back to the topic. If we want to make a horizontal aircraft game with C3, what should I pay attention to next? Considering the ecology of the current game market, mobile devices, for example, cell phones and tablets, there is a very high market share. So when you're designing a game, you should consider. The users of these platforms are very important. You can't only consider computer player when you are designing the game. But also need to consider playing your game on the mobile device. What's different? You should take the touch panel thing into account. As we mentioned in the last episode, we have designed the inputs, the variables, and the corresponding actions. These three are separated, and we already have written some codes. Isn't that enough? The answer is not enough, no tilde no tilde no. The main reason is, using the function, on touched, or, is touching, to trigger multiple button inputs is not working. C3 only accepts single-click input trigger. This means that when you press, up, down, left, right, you can't fire bullets. And while you're firing bullets, you can't press up, down, left, right. But actually when we're playing, you must use both hands. That is, multi-point input. You can imagine yourself while playing. You can't fire a bullet when you are moving. Also, you can't move when you fire. And even you can't go right when you go up. You can't go left when you go to the right. It's very inconvenient for players. Or even you may not be able to play at all. So how do you solve this problem? Specifically, you can do this by multi-touch. The player can control multiple small box in this way. The player can trigger buttons on the UI. Then the aircraft can move, fire bullets. Let's illustrate it with an example. There are two box. The first box we called, multi-touch number one. When we press the screen, it will be changed its XY axis of coordinates. Move this block to the XY axis position of it. When it's not touched, reset its XY axis to minus 500. Next, we design, multi-touch number two. Its behavior also likes, one. When we press it at any position on the screen, its position will be changed to the position of multi-touch point. Also, when it's not be touched, the box will be reset to the position of starting. Here's a brief demo of how it works. You can see when I touch on the screen, the little box will follow my pointer, change to its corresponding position. Like this, the little box will change according to the position of the user. Although you can only see the effect of the box, one, on the computer simulation. But when you run it on cell phone, You'll see the box. Both of these box are working properly. This way you can be sure that the function is correct. Then it's time for inputting judgment. You can use this. When box 1 is overlapping these buttons, it can trigger event. We write a simple demo. Let's see how it works. You can see when these little box overlapping buttons, its color will be changed. It shows that we're right. Same thing in the project. We also have, up, down, left, right, and bullet, and bomb buttons. And also when we hit these buttons, we then set it to true. Okay, I think that's enough for this part. It can be combined with the input method that we designed before. It will be well implemented that control this small aircraft as well on mobile devices. And then, let's take a look at the actual screen by phone. Last time we designed the enemies, but enemies doesn't move, and waiting for bullets from the player. That is so stupid. This might make the game no challenge at all. If no challenge, players may not be excited to play at all. This is not okay. We should let these enemies have some simple ability to defend themselves. It can also shoot bullets, for example. 
Bullets will rush towards the player. Or maybe it's just a little bit of random move. Okay, so here we have to design the ability of enemy shooting bullets. The first step is to design the bullet. The bullet design is divided into three main parts. The first one is the ballistics of the flight. The second one is the effect caused by the collision. The last one is after the collision, then he has to eliminate himself. Here is the corresponding program. The first is ballistic. This feature is the same thing we mentioned before. Similar is using the bullet behavior. The difference with the previous one is that when the bullet is created, he would fly straight ahead, towards the player's aircraft. That means adjusting its flight angle when the moment that the bullet was created. So you can refer to this part of the codes. When the bullet is created, the angle of the bullet's flight is adjusted. And then it's moving forward to the player's angle. C3 provides some functions. So, you can directly use it. So, you just need to type this function. The bullet's XY position, and the player's XY position. It can then calculate the angle between them. Then take this angle. Fill in the angle of the bullet behavior. So that it goes straight to the player flies over. Attention, we only calculate the angle at the moment that the bullet was created. When it was created, it will fly towards the player. Make its angle correction for this time only. If you use a loop to change it. Time by time, non-stop changing. Then it becomes scary. It will be a tracking missile. So for the player, the difficulty level will be increased very much. Here we do not have this design now. Then the second step to design is. What will happen when the bullets collide with other objects? This part is the same as aircraft hit the wall. After the player is hit by the bullet, the player will be triggered to leave the game. It's the death event. And then the third step is to design. When collide happen, the bullet itself will be destroyed too. Also if the bullet does not hit the player, fly over the player and go to the left. We must also remember to destroy it. When the bullet reaches the left red bar, try to destroy it as well. This likes recycling of bullets that are beyond the screen. That ensures that the game's performance as well. Okay, so, the bullet design is done. After that, then it's how to produce the bullets. We use the enemy CD. Shoot the bullets, time by time in a period. So that enemies don't go crazy. Shoot the bullets insanely, just like we were mentioning last time. The player also has a CD when he shoots. Otherwise, it would be very crazy. Shooting bullets non-stop, this is not okay. Then, because the same concept will be used later on. So here mention. A very important thing is that. When enemies do not see the player. His status should be in the freeze stage. What is meant by freezing is, it doesn't fire bullets. And then it doesn't have movement behavior. He exactly just waits. He will wake up only when he sees the player. What does he do after he wakes up? He will attack the player, of course. Then he will rush towards the player. Or, spin, jump, etc. That's probably what happened. Okay, see what the player should do here. Actually, we know that the enemy is coming from the right. So eventually he's going to hit the red on our right. The iron bar thing can be taken as a trigger activation conditions. So when these enemies hits the right iron bar, and then he wakes up, after waking up, it can then shoot bullets at the player. Okay, okay, so this part of the specific code. It's like the following. Okay, let's see, what will the execution look like? Then design the second behavior. This behavior is to rush towards the player. It's quite interesting. That's what the suicide squad does. It's not that difficult to achieve this action. It's the same as before. Bullets will fly towards the player. So now change it to. This one enemy, itself, will also fly towards the player. So the same, we've also added the bullet behavior. And then the moment he leave the freeze. Adjusting its angle of flight. Fly straight in the direction of the player. So that's it but it's better to adjust the speed of movement. My suggestion is, slower than the bullet. Otherwise, enemy suddenly rushing over. He will feel very frightened. Next, there are two more kinds of moving patterns. These two moving patterns do not mean, actually moving in position. It means the enemy moves itself. Here we present it in two ways. The first way is, rotate. The second way is, orbit. The rotation part we can achieve by the rotate behavior. In the C3 rotate behavior, the clockwise angle is a positive number. The angle against the clock is a negative number. 
The value of the number it represents is how many degrees it turns per second. This way we want the enemy rotates in a counterclockwise direction. So we set it to minus 180 degrees. And then the same as before. It keep in freeze mode before the enemy see the player. So the default rotate behavior will be set to false. He will set to true and lets him start rotating. When the moment it is unfrozen. Then let's see how it works. Next, for the orbit part. The orbit behavior is quite interesting. Because orbit is a new feature of C3. Not available in C2. This part 1 suggests to read first. Which I mentioned in my previous video. If you were interested, you can see it. Okay, we've added this behavior. And then simply set the parameters. And you'll see that the enemy will be around. The invisible core to do orbit. A quick look at how it performs. We can see that everything looks fine. Let's just keep going. This side is the same as the bullet. The enemy should also be destroyed at the left end. Although it's not growing so much like bullets. But since it's out of the player's sight. Then they should be recycled appropriately. The way to recycle is of course, destroy, function. But the conditions for recycling are different. In terms of bullets, the condition for recovery is after hitting the red bar. But for the enemy, we just use. Its x-axis position is lower than left end of the screen. Then recycling. So for this purpose, we can use this code following. We have extended the above three designs for the enemy aircraft. To make this game a little more challenging to play. So let's move on to the next topic. Okay, let's explain the scene switch again. In fact, it was mentioned before. It's just like the exit stage. It's something like that. The so-called scene switching of this scene is in the other game development software. This is what it's called. But in C3 the layout is used. That is also the name of the layout. But this name. It easily confused with other parts. So here I'll use the scenes to illustrate. Avoid, layering, in the game. That is, lay out this behavior to explain separately. Avoiding misunderstandings. Anyway, if you hear me say later that it's a scene. Or the stage. Just make up your own mind. I know that this is actually said in C3. Go to layout this thing. Okay, so first of all, why are we designing scene switching? Because for the player, the game needs a complete flow to be presented. I'll use a more complete scene structure at the bottom. To illustrate. Let's take a look at this graph. In the beginning, after the player opens the game. The first enter point should be the opening animation. Generally, it could be the team of the company making the game. Showing its logo. Or to tell the world that. We designed this game anyway. Players at this stage. You can skip this stage. By UI or input screen. Of course, if you want to force the player to keep watching. Or even remember your company or studio logo. You can also use a countdown of 5 seconds to automatically skip. Then the player must keep watching and watching for 5 seconds. Of course, because my design is to choose 1. If he doesn't even press, you can watch for 5 seconds. He also can skip by clicking the screen. He will skip this opening animation scene. At the beginning of the animation, we designed a scene. And then the code part, you can refer to. After the logo appears for a few seconds, our mascot, the little demon, will appear. And when the system received event that by the player's pressing, it will switch to the next scene. And then the game selection scenes. This scene you can of course include. Game start, settings, about. These buttons. As a start transmission point. Let the player play, or watch more about. Some information about the game production group. Then when the player presses, game start. You will be able to go to the level selection section. Of course this place we have not yet implemented. But in the same way, you can design something like this. And then it could present which levels are not yet completed. Waiting for the player to click on it to enter. Then, or rather, when all the levels are completed. The boss will be appeared. So to implement these functions you can refer to the code. When on touched, a button. It will trigger the go to layout function. This side is also the same as before. Okay, here's another plug. If you want to support keyboard or joystick input. It doesn't work with the mouse. Or any other touch panel way. You can't press these buttons. So you may need to design a selection box. Let the user know exactly which option he is selecting now. By the selection box. After pressing up and down. And then press enter to go to the next scene. I didn't do this part. But I'll finish it if I have to later. So let's imagine now that we get to a challenge level and then. 
You can then link to our playscape that we designed before. And then after entering the playing scene, we can imagine that after the player succeeds in the challenge, the game scene will be changed to you win. If the player is failure, the game scene will be changed to you lose. This is my simple explanation of scene switching. Okay, the above is the second part of this series. Construct 3 How to Make a Horizontal Aircraft Game Episode 2 In this video, we consider the input of the handheld device with C3's multi-touch plus multiple touch boxes to achieve. And then more enemies' behavior patterns were designed, including it shooting bullets to the player. Also, rotate, orbit behavior. And the design of the game scenes was planned. Start animation, game menu, player exit and player challenge success scenario. It looks like this game is almost complete. Here's a preview. Next video we'll share. We'll mention the last share of this series. That means, mainly in the boss design section. And some game testing and fine tuning. What's next? It needs to refine the functionality and planning. Okay, that's the end of the video. I will continue to finish this series as well. The project of the game is the same as the last shared location. And of course the full project code is included. For your reference and download. If you have any suggestions, you can give me a message. Let me know. If you think it's a good video, please click on the like button. And thank you for subscribing to my video. Okay, I am Chung Yi. Thank you very much for watching this video.